All right, welcome back everybody. So now we're gonna look at a um, few videos with a few basic definitions that we're gonna use through the rest of the course. So the first of these is uh, elementary equivalence. So we say that two structures, M and N, are elementary equivalent if they satisfy exactly the same sentences. Okay, so this is for all sentences phi in the vocabulary of M and N. So they have to have the same vocabulary, M and M, for this to make sense. Uh, if M satisfies phi, if and only if uh, N satisfies phi. Right, and if so, we write this symbol like the three lines. This means elementary equivalent. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Uh, first, the natural numbers with zero and plus are not elementary equivalent with the integers with zero and plus. How will you prove and on and on that two things are not elementary equivalents? Well, you need to find a formula that is true in one and not true in the other. So what would be a formula true in one and not true in the other? Well, in the integers with plus, every element has an, an inverse, and that's not true in the naturals, so that would be one. So you have that the integers with plus and zero satisfy the formula that says that for every x, there exists a y, x plus y equals zero, right? Uh, mean, y meaning negative x, and this is not true so if you take the natural numbers with plus and zero and take the same formula, then this is not true. They do not satisfy the same formula because if you take, for instance, x equals two, there is no y that you add two x in the natural numbers and you get zero. So that's why they are not elementary equivalent. There is something, the first order formula sentence that one satisfies and the other one doesn't. Let's look at another example. What about now z, the integers, and the rationals? Because now in the rationals, the rationals satisfy this formula, actually, that we had before. So if you take the rationals, q plus and zero, they do satisfy this formula, right? Because every element has an, an inverse, you know, an, an uh, additive inverse, so a negative. But uh, I'm still claiming they are elementary, not elementary equivalent. So what would be a difference? What is something that one satisfies and the other one doesn't? Well. Um, in the rationals, we can divide every number by two, for instance, or by three or any number, while in the integers, we cannot, right? So the rationals with zero and plus, uh, they satisfy that for every x there exists a y such that the y plus y equals x, namely uh, x over two, and the integers with zero and plus do not satisfy this same formula. Right, because if you take x equals to one, one half is not an integer. So they do not; uh, they are not elementary equivalents. What about now same structure, uh, zero and plus the additive group, but now for the rationals and the reals? Here is a question for you guys: What do you guys think? Are these two elementary equivalents? So let's think: Can we find a formula, a sentence? that is true about one and is not true about the other. I don't know, you may think, well, let's say the reals was something different about the reals and it's not about the rational. So in the reals, uh, we have a square root of two. But square root of two is defined as something that x times x equals two, you have to use times. And here we only have zero and plus, right? So only with uh, addition and zero, you want to find a difference. So we couldn't use square root of two. Uh, e and pi seem complicated to define only with plus and zero. In the reals, every subset has, every bounded subset has a least upper bound, right? That's true in the reals, not in the rationals, but we have to quantify over every subset. And in first order, all we can say is every x or every y or x exists an x, exists a y, exists a z. So only, we can only quantify over elements, right? So we couldn't talk about all subsets. Um, so we're gonna see, uh, this is gonna require proof. That is more complicated, but these two are actually elementary equivalent. We're gonna see that later. We need, we need more techniques to prove this is the case. Uh, but yes, the, every first order sentence you can write in the vocabulary with zero and plus, uh, that is true about the rationals, it's also gonna be true about the reals. 
So we cannot differentiate them like that. They look very different. So the fact that they have holes cannot be observed inside in the group with plus and, and zero. That's quite interesting. Okay, now the linear ordering. So this is a structure, the integers only with the order, and we're not looking at any operations. So just think of the integers, all the integer numbers. It's a line that goes on both directions with the order. Um, and we're looking at the rationals. So what is the formula that we want to look at here? Well, in the integers that we have, we have that there are you can find two success, uh, successive elements which have nothing in between. Well, that's not true in the rationals, right? So, so the formula that says that there exists x and y, uh, x below y, such that there is no z in between them, uh, this one is going to be true in z less than, and is false in q less than. Okay. Uh, if you are very picky, you might be saying, well, look, they, the structures have less than or equal, and we're using less, so we can say less is shorthand for x less than or equal y and not x equals y. So when we write less, strictly less than, that's what we mean. Okay, so not elementary equivalence because that formula right there is true in one and false in the other. Let's continue seeing an example. Now look at this one right here. This one, let me do a picture of what, what this is. So z plus z, so the integers um, with less than, they look like they have a zero essentially there and they have an element, a whole chain of elements one direction and a chain of elements in the other direction. z plus c means put them, put two of these chains together. So we have one chain and then another chain and they are both infinite and then they kind of go to an infinite part in there. Um, so here we have one z chain and here we have another z chain and we have an ordering less than or equal that is orders all these elements in two infinite chains. Okay, and here we have one. So one is one chain, the other one is two chains, z chains as they are called. And the question is again, are these two elementary equivalent? Can you find a sentence that is true of one and not true about the other? And if you think about it, um, well, think about it. So try to find such a sentence and I'll give you the answer in class. And here's another one for you, for you guys, the rationals and the reals, again, now with only with the order. Um, and I would say, yeah, try to think about whether you can find a sentence that is true in one and false in the other. I'll give you a hint, you won't be able to. So, they are actually elementary equivalents. Um, as we're going to prove later in class. Okay, one more definition uh, before we end the video. So if you start have a structure M, like any of these structures here, we're going to use this uh, notation here, theory of M. TH is for theory. It means the set of all the sentences that are true in M. Okay, so theory of M is the set of all the phi sentence such that uh, the sentence is true in M. So all the sentences that hold in M. Okay, everything that is true, you put it in this set called the theory of M. Everything that is true about it. Um, and if you see the definition of elementary equivalence, elementary equivalent means they have exactly the same sentences that are true about you than they are true about the other guy. So that means that being elementary equivalent is exactly the same thing as saying you have the same theory. The same set of sentences true about M is the same as the set of sentences true about N. Okay? This set of sentences, this set of true sentences is very complicated sometimes because it's a set of all the sentences you can write that are true about these guys. Um, for instance, let me just make a comment. This is, is something that is proved in 136, not, not in this class. The theory of the natural numbers with um, the semi-ring, just like plus times zero and one, uh, but for the particular structure of the natural numbers, is not computable. And by that, I mean 
you're going to write a computer program that if you input a sentence, a sentence is a string of characters, so computers are very happy with dealing with strings of characters. So there is no program that if you input a sentence in the language of the natural numbers, 0, 1 plus times, it will tell you yes or no whether the, the sentence is true or false in the natural numbers. So deciding truth uh, in number theory, about natural numbers, number theory, is not something you can do with an algorithm. There is no method you can write and you can follow to tell if a sentence of the natural numbers, about the natural numbers, is true. That's why the homework in number theory are hard, not method. This is uh, true for the natural numbers. It's not in some of the other examples uh, up here, like q less than or equal and uh, n zero plus. Like actually, the examples over there, some of them, you actually can write an algorithm that will tell you if a sentence belongs to the theory or not. Um, for instance, that if you don't have the time symbol. But once you have plus and times together, this structure becomes complicated. Well, the structure is not complicated. The structure is very simple. It's just the natural numbers with plus and times. That's couldn't get simpler than that. The theory, the set of sentences that are true about it, is complicated. Uh, again, let me let me highlight again. The theory of M is a theory of a structure. Once you have a structure, you take all the sentences that are true about it. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's an operation on the structure. See you in the next video.